Hello, everyone. My name is Zhong Fu Xu. Today, I will introduce you multi cluster service mesh with East. Uh, before we get started, let me first introduce myself. I'm Zhong Fu Xu. I'm open source enthusiastic and works on open source software since 2017. I have joined the East committee since 2018 and the focus on networking since then. And now I is to call maintainer and one of the top contributors. I'm also an ISTU steering committee member and the author of Cloud Native Service Mesh ISTU, the best selling service mesh book in China. Uh, let's see today's agenda. Uh, there are four parts that I will introduce today. The first part is use case of multi cluster. Uh, in this part, I will uh, show you uh, why we need multi cluster. And the second part is the challenge of multi cluster. And, and there are several challenges here. I will show you. Uh, the third part is different multi cluster patterns. Uh, this part is the most uh, important part of today's topic. The last part, I will introduce you future evolution of multi-cluster in Istio. Let's say the first part, why do we need multi-cluster? Multi-cluster is a strategy for deploying an application on or across multiple Kubernetes clusters with the goal of improving availability, isolation, and scalability. Multi cluster can be important to ensure compliance with different and conflicting regulations as individual clusters can be adopted to comply with geographic or certification specific regulations. The speed and safety of software delivery can also be increased within individual development teams deploying applications to isolated clusters and selectively exposing which services are available for testing and the release. The first part is, the first point is availability. Multi clusters can span across multi regions or even multi vendors. Users can replicate applications in each cluster. Thus, even when one cluster is totally down, the traffic can fail over to a healthy remote clusters, and it has no influence on the system availability. The second one is performance. Uh, for internet users, they can access the servers nearest to them, and the latency is the smallest. A strong isolation guarantees simplicity key operational processes such as cluster and application upgrades. Moreover, isolation can re reduce the blast radius of a cluster outage. Organizations with a strong tenancy isolation requirements can route each tenant to their individual cluster. Scalability, one Kubernetes cluster can take charge of 5,000 nodes at the most. It is not enough for 100, 100 kilo, 100,000 replics application. So it's not enough for uh, their application level. So they need multi-clusters. The last one is the uh, cost. A multi cluster strategy enables your organization to shift workloads between different Kubernetes vendors to take advantage of new capabilities and pricing offered by different vendors. Okay, let's say the second part the challenges for multi cluster. Uh, there are four points I list here. The first one is surface dis discover discovery. For native Kubernetes, there is no way to do service discovery 
for remote clusters. We have to make use of external service registries like the keeper. For example, on the picture, uh, on the right picture, the cluster one clients cannot uh, discover dis discover the class services from the other clusters. And the second one is the DNS DNS reserve resolve. The remote service domain is resolvable in local cluster because in native Kubernetes, the Kubernetes is responsible for DNS resolve, but it has no information of the other cluster's service and endpoints. So for a service spans across multi clusters, it is resolvable. The service is hard to access because the Kubernetes implement service access by IP tables, which only handles local cluster service endpoints. The third one is load balancer policy. The load balancing is round robin for Kubernetes. Uh, AV testing and the canary release are hard to implement. The fourth one is a lack of security. It is very dangerous to talk with each other with plain text. It's best, especially, uh, sorry, especially through. Uh, especially through the public network. Okay, let's see the next part. What is Istio? Uh, from the Istio official document website, we can see the, the what Istio is. Uh, before we start that part, let's show Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a platform for application deployment and operation and also provides some capability on service discovery and the load balance. However, it's still a totally service or oriented and is very good supplement for Kubernetes in service management. It is very friendly to both developers and operators. From the slide here, it still provides four major uh, functions. The first one is connect. It uh, intelligently controls the flow of traffic and API calls between services. So with it, uh, we can do some more advanced uh, uh, traffic management like uh, uh, blue, green, green deployment, or red, black deployment, and granular redis release, canary release. Uh, the second part is uh, secure. It still pro provides the automatically TLS with each, uh, each API call. So by default, the service to service traffic is encrypted with TLS. And the th third part is uh, control uh, with uh, it still authorized authorization policy, authentication policy, it still can control the policy. The fourth part is, I think is the most uh, uh, important one. It uh, provides the, the ability such as access log, monitoring, and also access, uh, also uh, distributed tracing. Uh, let's say multi class server mesh. Uh, before we get started in production with multi cluster surface mesh, we should uh, consider the following three questions. Compared with multi clusters, which provides a black box service already, single mesh is aware of all the clusters. Uh, services and can do more advanced localizing like location, aware routing, and fail over. So the first question, the answer is, we should choose single mesh. 
The second question is single network or different networks? It's to use is a simplified definition of network to refer to workload instances that have direct re reachability. For example, by default, all workload instances in a single cluster are on the same network. Many production systems require multiple networks or subnets for isolation and high availability. It's still about spring spending a service mesh over a variety of network topologies. So the second answer for the second question is depends on the uh, production environment we have. The third one is single or multiple control plans. Single plan is easier while multi-replicated control plans in each cluster may provide more availabilities. We can depend on our uh, real scenery. Okay, let's say the next part, DNS resolve before 1.8. 1. Let's say the picture before 1.8. The DNS, DNS resolve is via the Google DNS and the uh, uh, Istio Core DNS. For services, for native Kubernetes services, it is uh, resolved by the Google DNS. And uh, for the remote cluster services, it is resolved by a separate plugin, Istio Core DNS. The core DNS is, a, is an upstream DNS for the Kubernetes. Uh, in native Kubernetes, it still uses the virtual IP returned by the D DNS lookup to load balance across the list of active endpoints for the requested services, taking into account any configured routing rules. It's still uses other community services or endpoints, or is to service entry to configure its internal mapping of host name to workload IP address. To ensure that DNS lookup succeeds, you must deploy a community service to each cluster that consumes that service. This ensures that regardless of where the request originates, they will pass DNS lookup and will be handed to Istio for proper routing. This can also be achieved with Istio service entry rather than Kubernetes service. However, a service entry doesn't config configure the Kubernetes DNS server. This means that DNS will be configured either manually or with automatic, automated tooling such as Istio called DNS plugin. Let's say the DNS resolve after, after release 1.8. Uh, after being 1.8 release, DNS proxy is introduced, not only for multi-clusters, but also for virtual machine DNS resolve. Previously, we need an additional components is to call DNS, it is not very friendly. It requires service entries created. It still is extends a new kind of XDS. NDS. NDS is the full name is name, discover, name table discovery service to facilitate the DNS resolve. NDS is used by the DNS proxy to fetch DNS name tables from SQL control plan. And then it builds DNS lookup table to service DNS resolve from, lo from local application service. The name table contains all the services across clusters. For Kubernetes service, the address is class IP. For the other service entry defined service, the address is auto allocated. Uh, this address is a kind of cluster E IP address. Okay, let's see the picture. This is the uh, works, 
workflow of the DNS to, to resolve. Firstly, the, the DNS request is forwarded to the DNS proxy. The DNS proxy returns the DNS response if it caches the DNS name table. Otherwise, it will forward the DNS request to the Google DNS. And then maybe the Google DNS can forward the DNS request to external upstream DNS. Single network. Let's say single network. For single network, all clusters res resides in a same network and all ports from class to one can talk to port from class two directly. Thus, no gateway is needed and the cross class communication will not increase latency. In most cases, this is not common. Let's say the pros. Pros is low latency for east to west traffic as a gateway is not needed. The cons. One is the complexity, need an additional tool to build a flat network. The second one is the security. Yeah, it is not secure as all the workloads are within a single network. The third one is no overlapping port service IP ranges. That means that the cluster, the cluster one and the cluster two cannot have overlapping service IP address or port IP address. Port IP address. Uh, uh, different networks. Service mesh can spring, span different networks. Each cluster resides in a network. Port can not talk directly to the other ports in another cluster. This provides better isolation. Each cluster is independent, independent. and the cross cluster service access must through uh, east to west gateway. So the challenge is is a cross cluster service communication. Actually, it uh, requires east to west gateway, and it works in TIS out pass through mode. So let's see the pros and cons. Yeah, it is uh, good for scaling of network addresses. The cons is, is the load balancing across multi cluster as well as uh, single cluster. Okay. Different network gateway. Uh, the first one is the split horizon is EDS. Endpoints from different network cannot be accessed directly, must through a gateway, and the gateway is accessible from other networks. So it is hard, it is Istio D who has to convert the endpoint address to gateway address. Gateway works in out pass through mode and with SNI cluster network filter applied on the listener. In void, listens on the same port and for different for different service to service calls by the SNI it brings. With this, it requires the cross cluster communication must be TLS encrypted. The SNI cluster network filter works by setting the upstream cluster name from the SNI field passed from the TLS handshake. Uh, let's say the single network primary remote model. Uh, from the picture, we can say that uh, this is the class one and the class two, class east and the class to west are the two clusters, but they are in the same network. So port service A can talk to service B across clusters. And uh, from the picture, we can see that there is only one control plan resides in cluster west. So this is the primary remote model. The service dis discovery is done 
by the STD. STD list watches the services and points from all the clusters within the meshes. Uh, the con configure discovery. Uh, it is also the STD who list watches uh, customer resource like uh, virtual service destination rules from private primary, from a wholly primary cluster. Uh, this is how the single network primary remote pattern works. This is the single network multi primary uh, model. In this model, the ECO control plan is deployed into every cluster. Uh, sorry. Okay, the service discovery is like looks like the same as the single network. It's still the in each cluster. This towards service endpoints from all the clusters. Uh, for the configured discovery, uh, is to the in each clusters list towards is local, only local cluster customer resource like uh, virtual service that is true. Uh, side sidecars that means the uh, local cluster sidecars can only can connect to the local is to and the local cluster is to is responsible for pushing XDS to the sidecars. Uh, this pattern provides more availability and the resilience because one cluster, when one cluster fails, or when one cluster, or when single control plan fails, the other clusters can, can work as well. Let's say the Gateway for the different networks pattern. Yeah, how can East to discover recovery discovers the East West gateway and its request to do auto to do auto split Ryzen EDS? This is by the namespace labels. Uh, the namespace labels topology dot dot io network. Uh, tells is to the local cluster is in network one and the service labels topology dot is to dot io slash network tells is to d the service in is net uh, the, the, the service is net is resized uh, reside in network one it is the east to west to Gateway service. So we can get the service uh, ingress IP or external IP address to get the east to west uh, gateway address for network one. And thus, the ECOD can convert the endpoints uh, for network one with the gateway address. So what can be Improved. Yeah, multi cluster is looks very well for and it is already can be used in production. But there are several uh, countries we have to face to. Uh, the first one is uh, better load balancing across cluster. From the right side picture, we can say that when cluster one service want to talk to cluster two services. And the East, uh, East uh, West Gateway acts as a TCP proxy. Uh, actually, it is a TLS proxy. And the session sticky between the uh, client service and the server service is not applicable because the uh, East to West Gateway works on round robin load balancing policy. So there is no setting, session sticky between source and desk post. And this is the uh, issue in GitHub. 
we, we can see more details there. The second one is the highly list service does not work well. Uh, that means when we want to access a highly list service uh, to uh, uh, like the right picture, if we want to access uh, from the cluster one to a remote headless service that are deployed in class two. Uh, it is not possible now because that the headless service instance DS resolved resolved to the pod, pod address and the cluster type is using the original test. Uh, so the, if we access the pod IP, P address from the local cluster, cluster one here, the traffic is plain text and it cannot be processed, proxied by the gateway. The third one is the cluster client master uh, send TLS rightly. So if we want to make the highly service works, firstly, we should uh, make the east uh, west gateway work for plain text, not only for TLS encrypt traffic. The last one is a network or cluster aware load balancing. Because for multi, multi networks, multi cluster mo model, the traffic is forwarded by the East West gateway. So, in order to reduce, so this increase is the service to service latency because the traffic is uh, through uh, an additional East West gateway hope. So, we should uh, increase, uh, improve the performance by uh, enable by supporting network or cluster aware load balancing. So with network aware load balancing, the traffic from local cluster will forward it to the local cluster services firstly. And then when, when the local cluster services uh, fail down, the traffic will fail over to the remote cluster or remote network clusters. Okay, thank you. This is all the all today's topic. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time.